Hello there, Indian Mills United Methodist Church family, friends, and guests. Welcome to our June 20th service. Happy Father's Day to all dads out there. On this Father's Day, we're going to be looking at how we can endure life's storms. Those of us who have been fortunate enough to be blessed with the love of a mom or dad, whether biological, adopted, or fostered, or other, have probably experienced someone who cared for them through a stormy part of life. Stay tuned to learn how we can endure the storms of life always. Let us pray the opening prayer. O oh, Savior, stand with us and calm us through all life's storms, so our courage may be in you to stand with the poor, oppressed, and suffering. Amen. Our 
first reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and verses 11 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's gospel reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who is present in our storms, may the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dad did not give us any option. He'd say, Bob, Jack, time to get to work. And it wasn't fun. It was heavy manual labor, digging footers, removing dirt by the bucketfuls, mixing cement with hose, carrying cinder blocks and other tasks. And we'd hear about it if something went wrong. The worst incident occurred on a roof. He asked me for a tool and I gave him the wrong one. He went ballistic and threw his hammer at me. 
right there on the roof. I ducked. The hammer missed me, but I lost my grip and began to slide down feet first and fast. Fortunately, I was able to dig my heels into the roof to avoid falling two stories. So I slowly and quietly crawled to the ladder and cautiously climbed down. I wondered, Dad, don't you care that you almost killed me? Fortunately, not everyone's dad had post-traumatic stress disorder from combat in a war like my dad did. But you have probably encountered people whose actions made you wonder, what, don't you care if I perish? The disciples asked Jesus that same question in today's gospel reading. The story begins with the words, that day. That day, like many for Jesus and his followers, included teaching and healing. But that particular day had been long and tiring, and Jesus just wanted to get away. No farewell ceremonies, more like, let's sail away. So they began sailing across a tiny lake-sized sea. But that lake is vulnerable to violent storms that suddenly come boom, just like that. Storms just happen. We might see them coming, but usually they just come, like flying hammers. The disciples didn't see it coming. Jesus was sleeping. All of a sudden, boom, a violent storm. They take on water and the boat is sinking. Meanwhile, Jesus is still sleeping. And when all seems hopeless, they awaken him. Don't you care that we might drown, that we're perishing? Jesus got up and treated the storm like a demon, saying, quiet, be still. He used these same words to cast out demons in Mark chapter 1, verse 25. And so this implies that this storm is evil. Now, my dad was not evil, but what caused him to throw the hammer was evil. He was the victim of a storm himself doing combat in World War II. The roots of war are evil and cause more evil. As followers of Jesus, we need to identify evil, stand up to it, tell it to be quiet and to be gone. This story is also about Jesus and faith. When storms come and we're afraid, we often lose hope and lose our faith and belief in a loving God. That's why Jesus asked the disciples, have you still no faith? For just before this passage, Mark says that Jesus always spoke in parables and stories, and this left some puzzled, unsure, yet challenged to risk believing in him. But Mark says when he spoke to the disciples, he explained the parables. He explained everything to them. So when Jesus asks, have you still no faith? He's frustrated. Come on, guys. What else must I give you? Cheat sheets? Cliff notes? Faith book for dummies? But the disciples were wondering, who is this? Even the winds? and waves obey him. They'd never seen Jesus calm a storm before, so in spite of seeing him do other miracles, they didn't know Jesus could master the sea, which to them was especially supernatural. So they did not think to ask him to calm the sea. But if they had asked, I believe he'd probably smile, give a thumbs up, and like all of a sudden, poof, no storm. Instead, they used words that could have been pretty offensive to Jesus. Don't you care? I don't know, but did they miss Jesus' mission statement in John 3.16? For God so loved the world? 
Instead, they shout in fear. Don't you care? Of course, Jesus cares. He was sleeping because he was exhausted from caring. Of course, Jesus cares. But in their fear, with their boat sinking, the disciples forgot to focus on who Jesus is. And they gave up on life. They gave up on hope. And they gave up on him. It's easy to forget that Jesus is with us in the midst of a terrifying storm. Perhaps Jesus doesn't still every storm, but he does. He does stand with us. He does stand with us in our sinking boats, in turbulent storms. He cares, and that can mean everything in a storm. Paul is disappointed with the Corinthians in our first reading, especially since they don't seem to care. He addresses them like children because they aren't risking loving like they could and should. Not wanting them to wait, he says, now is the time. The winds are blowing now. Yes, life is uncertain and filled with peril, but now it's time to claim faith. Paul wrote he had endured suffering, hinting that their lives aren't going to get any easier either, that choosing to accept God's grace make, uh, might make them, might bring them lots of trouble. But for Paul, it's worth the choice and the ensuing storms that come because it's the only way to survive those storms that come by claiming this faith this family, to be like Jesus and have each other's back by being present and caring in the midst of storms, choosing to be part of something bigger than ourselves, a family and a community, means that we have the support and resources we need to endure and to help others to endure. That's how we survive the storm together. You know, when my dad was a scout leader, he took me on some overnight camping trips with the troop. On one overnight, while I was six years old, there was a thunderstorm. And I was scared of bears and thunderstorms. That, and so that night, Dad laid down next to me and reassured me that everything would be fine. And Dad was present with me through that storm and showed me how much he cared. He was present a lot, sometimes too much. But he cared. Jesus is present with us always. Jesus cares and he doesn't throw hammers at us either. I pray that the calming of this COVID-19 storm has put us in awe of Jesus and helps us to see that he does care and has been with us throughout this storm and continues to be and will be continue to be with us. And as Paul told the Corinthians, now is the time of God's favor. The question for us is, how will we respond now, both in the fair weather of our life and in the storms of our lives? Let us pray. Loving God, give us faith to trust that you are with us and care for us all in all storms. Help us to join together to care for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for all people in the world. When I pray, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with a heartfelt. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for being with us when life is stormy. Give us faith to trust in your care and to care for others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Jesus, give your church courage during storms of uncertainty to stand with the poor and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the Indian Mills United Methodist Church to be your agents of peace in a turbulent world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all graduates with wisdom that they may turn to you when navigating the storms in their lives. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all dads that they may help their children navigate the storms of their lives as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide world leaders toward peace that all may experience the voice of calm in life's storms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal all from the storms of illness or injury, including those we lift up to you, either silently in our hearts or aloud in our homes. Help us be your kind and calming presence to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort families and friends who grieve the loss of loved ones, including those we lift up to you either silently in our hearts or allowed in our homes. Help us to be present to them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. church family, friends, and guests, as followers of Jesus Christ, we pledge our prayers, our presence, our service, and witness to the ministry of his church. Even during this pandemic, people have stepped up and been present online and have faithfully given in their prayers and in their gifts and service. I'm also happy to hear of others who have said that they were ready to return to in-person gatherings long ago. I pray that when in-person gatherings begin again, that everyone will take the risk to care as Paul urged the Corinthians to do. If you'd like to know how you can be there for others during the storms of life, give me a call at 609-980-3527 or make a donation to our food pantry or the ministries of the church, or get vaccinated if you haven't done so already, or drive someone else to a vaccination site who hasn't been vaccinated yet, or fill out the survey I'll be sending out about our return to in-person gatherings July 11th, and help us prepare for in-person gatherings by coming to the church on Tuesday, June 29th, about nine in the morning for a church cleanup day. In the meantime, stay safe, 
stay well and keep praying. And remember, God loves you and so do we at the Indian Mills United Methodist Church. And by the way, happy Father's Day, dads. <laughs>